Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Hope you are enjoying the conference. Getting towards the end of it now, so I expect your brains are getting a little bit full. So this, tech, this talk isn't too technical. A little bit of a, a trip report, really, my, my adventures into the land of driver's staging and what I learned there. I, uh, I thought a few pictures would help at this time of the day too, to keep us attention. I went looking for a logo for driver's staging because, right, you've got to have a logo to be taken seriously these days, don't you? And I couldn't find one. So I thought a stagecoach and Lux can be driving the stage. It's close enough to driver's staging. It'll have to do. So what, what is driver's staging and what have I done there? Um, this is a wall of text. A bit of it was highlighted before. It's not anymore. doesn't matter. This is a wall of text out of uh, documentation process, two dot process RST, that tells stuff about driver staging. Um, this is a way to keep track of drivers that aren't up to Linux kernel quality standards. Um, if you don't like walls of text, I've got a picture. It's like a halfway house. Who knows what a halfway house is? It's, you know, when people have been in prison for years and years and years and they've been released and, and they've got to go out to face the real world and they don't really know how to behave. They don't know how to dress. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to behave. So they go and stay in a halfway house for a while to kind of acclimatise. And driver's staging is like a halfway house for code, code that's been this escaped from proprietary land, that's uh, been set free in some way, but doesn't really fit with the community. So it's, a, it's a, a halfway house for code, but it's also a halfway house in a different sense for developers. It's a place for developers who maybe want to try out being a kernel developer. They, they're not really sure. Um, they've heard that kernel is a pretty scary place. Um, they don't know what to start working on, because everybody's probably got to-do lists, but they're only on their laptops and stuff. Um, Driver staging is meant to be a place where the to-do lists are really quite obvious, um, where patches are welcome. You won't be treading on anybody's toes if you try and fix something. And if you break something, well, people are, try to be fairly understanding. Um, so yeah, like a halfway house for, for code. So what's my interest? What was my interest in driver staging? There's two totally different projects that uh, over the last 12 months I've been involved with that, that involve code in driver staging. Firstly, um, there's Gnubi, which is something completely unrelated to my work at SUSE, except that it's kernel stuff and I'm a kernel hacker at SUSE, but it's a personal project. Gnubi is a, a network attached storage device. It's open hardware in that um, all the, the specifications the schematic diagrams and the measurements of the hardware and so forth is all open. It was a crowd funded to get enough money to build it. It uses a MediaTek MT7621 SOC, System on Chip, which is a MIPS-based processor that does the job. I think it was designed for use in routers and, you know, your home routers and things like that. Um, it's got USB and Ethernet and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's only got 512 meg of RAM, so if you try and do a Git clone of the Lynx kernel, you're going to need a fair bit of swap. It doesn't have a floating point unit, so if you want to trans you know, re resize images on your file server, then you're going to want to make sure you use the integer resizing code, because the floating point resizing code is really slow when it's emulated. But anyway, it's, it's a thing. Um, and the other thing... The other project is Luster, which is entirely, I've been doing as part of my work at SUSE. Luster is a cluster file system that's been around for a long time and has been in staging for a while, sort of. I'll get to more details on that shortly. Let's start talking about my adventures with the GNUBI. As I said, it's, it's open hardware, a, a NAS device. Um, the, the SOC vendor, who was probably MediaTek, but they were Raylink before that, and you know these companies keep changing name. We wouldn't know anything about that at SUSE, companies being bought and sold or anything, no. But, but it did happen to Raylink that became MediaTek, and both of those brand names are in the code in various places. But I think it was a 3.10 kernel they released way back when, which um, not like a bunch of patches on top of 3.10. It was just, here's a bunch of code. Here's, here's a kernel image. 
source code, which wasn't quite the same as 3.10 by several thousand lines, and had drivers for all sorts of MediaTek systems on the chip, not just this one, but lots of others. It had lots of hash if defs and, and stuff. Um, fortunately, well before I came along, some, some nice people had split out some of these patches, some of this code into individual patches, and they were used in uh, OpenWort or Libra CMC or there's another one. One of these little distributions are designed for uh, routers and home switches and stuff like that. So anyway, they were 4.4.8, I think, 4.4, maybe both. And so my first involvement with this was I, I ported them to upstream to the then mainline kernel, which is 4.14, and I wrote about it for LinuxWeeklyNews.net because that's what I like to do. Um, and it was a bit of fun. I uh, had patches for a GPO driver, SPI driver, which is how it talks to the onboard flash, an MMC driver, which for me, that's where the root file system is on a little SD card, um, PCIe. PCIe Express is how it talks to the hard drives. So the page isn't there anymore, but the hard drives are plugged into... Th so there's three serial ATA controllers that are connected to the PCI Express, and there's Ethernet. So I had all these patches. Oh, what am I going to do with them? I didn't really have the time to get them into upstream code. You know, I, I barely had time to port them and write the article and stuff. And during some sort of discussions, um, I came to have the obvious idea. Why don't I try out driver staging? I'd heard about this thing. Um, it'd been mentioned on the kernel mailing list in here and there. There's this place you could put, you could dump code and it would get fixed. You just put code there and it gets fixed. Sort of. Um, maybe. Anyway, there are some requirements for getting into driver staging. You've got to have an appropriate li license, kind of obviously. It's got to be GPL compatible. Well, I assume the patches were GPL compatible. The, the original 3.10 code dump didn't... Well, it must have been, because it had the, the, the copying file on the top of it, mustn't it? So it must have all been GPL. Um, uh, it code compiles. That is a requirement in driver staging. The code has to not break the build which maybe you can achieve by using, you know, the k-config to disable it on certain architectures or something, just be on the safe side. But it's got to compile and not, and not break the build. Um, it's got to have a to-do file for each driver. This is a pretty firm rule. There's no, there's nothing, no clear guidelines on what has to be in the to-do file exactly. Um, so some of the to-do files I created, I think, were um, uh, adjust to match kernel coding guidelines, and that was about it. Um, some of them I had more to say, but um, nonetheless, I wrote a few to-do files, one for each driver. And another requirement is there needs to be somebody who cares. There needs to be somebody who's kind of champion the project, who, who keeps an eye on it, who's not going to let it languish. Driver's not allowed to remain in driver staging indefinitely without anything happening, or Greg will just kick them out. Yeah, Greg, Greg KH sort of maintains driver staging and reviews patches and applies things. Um, so uh, well, I met all those criteria, and so I, I posted off this bunch of patches, and within a week, Greg applied them, which I thought was pretty, pretty impressive. What sort of response did I get? Well, obviously seeing... So all the broken out patches that were in OpenWort had a from line, and it wasn't from MediaTek, it was from this gentleman named John Crispin. And so I CC'd, he, CC'd him when I emailed them out, I thought that was the polite thing to do. Um, and it, this is his somewhat surprising to me reply. Now, I, I, I want to make an effort. I don't want to pick on John at all for saying this. I think what he contributed was great. I've benefited a lot from, from his work. And this is more of a feeling that he's probably not alone in having this attitude. I strongly oppose having any of this code merged into the kernel, even if it's only the staging area and from other texts in the email that I haven't quoted, there's two reasons. One was that the quality was pretty co poor. The quality of this code was well below average. And he's absolutely right. No doubt about that. It mediocre is, is being kind. Well, I mean, you know, it's a mix. Some of it was fine. A lot of it wasn't. But that's no reason for it not to be in driver staging. You saw right at the beginning, you know, this is for code that is not up to the kernel standards yet. No matter how bad that is, as long as it compiles, as long as it's licensed properly, as long as somebody cares about it, it's allowed in. 
And the other reason was that there are existing drivers in the kernel that just should be modified to work with the new hardware, and that's true to an extent. The, um, the MMC driver, there is a very similar driver in the mainline kernel that, that it's, it's an MTK SD driver for the MMC. It should kind of work, but it doesn't. I don't know why. Um, and a lot of the work that's been done on the version that went into staging is to try and make it look similar to the one in the main driver's tree so you can start seeing the differences. Once you can see the differences, you can maybe port the differences over. Um, so he's absolutely right that existing drivers should be enhanced where necessary. It's true for MMC. It's probably true for Ethernet. It's not true for GPIO. It's, um, I mean, it's definitely not true for PCIe, but John, John acknowledged that. Um, so, yeah, that's not a reason for it to stay out of staging. It can be in staging for a while, get cleaned up, made look similar to that, find the differences, and then move the differences over and get rid of it. And that's a perfectly appropriate usage of driver staging. So um, I thank him very much for his code, um, and we'll do something different from what he suggested. So that was uh, an early response. The other main sort of response was patches. We got quite a lot of patches. This is, I think, the first one. Uh, apparently the owner definition in this particular context is unnecessary and someone said, here's a patch to remove that. Um, I take, I, he's right, I looked into it to find out why and there's some macro that sticks the owner in the right place. It's not very interesting, but it doesn't matter. It's a patch, it improved the code, even if it's only a tiny little bit, so it was welcome. Um, not all patches were quite so welcome. Can you see why this is a problem? So it, uh, we... we We've got this else if thing equals function call, and the thing equals function call has been moved up there. Wrong because... We yes, have uh, this assigned before, and the, the, the first there could be something... Uh, the first if body could be used for something totally wrong. Yeah, well, if, if VDesk was used in there, which we can't see in that patch, that would definitely be wrong. I don't think it is. Um, Another thing is, I mean, the, the particular problem I had with it, and it may not be the only problem, is that in the original code, if we went through this branch, uh, vchain find desk would never be called. And now it's always called. Is that a problem? Well, it depends a bit on the internals of um, vchain find desk. It's not actually a very complicated. I don't think so. So it probably wouldn't have really caused a serious bug. But it's more, more the principle that if the person found this running check patch, and check patch says putting a, an assignment inside an if is, is persona non grata, don't do that. Um, and, and that's fine. I actually don't mind that construct, but check patch hates it, check patch hates it so fine. But if you're going to transform the code, make sure you transform the code so it still does exactly the same thing. Or if you change the behavior, make sure you document that the change in behavior is appropriate. Either way. So it, it's kind of a little thing, but um, some little things like this have no consequence and some little things completely break behaviour, um, has been my experience. And, and as I said, this is not just for the code, it's all for the, also for the developers. And developers, I think, need that sort of feedback. Um, that's why they're there to, to learn. And so, uh, and I, I gave that feedback and the developer in question I suggested some options, they came back with a fix, it all went in, it's all happy. Um, but yeah, you've got to, got to keep an eye on the patches coming in. Um, one thing I found is sort of looking back over the, the stream, because those are just two out of maybe not hundreds, but certainly dozens of patches that came in, drib, in dribs and drabs and then bunches, is that there seemed to be two attitudes that developers would have to what they find in driver staging. Some of them just want to come along and fix a problem. And maybe it's check patch. They run check patch, they find all the things, they send patches to silence check patch, and then they're done. Or they know of a particular sort of um, bug that exists and they find that and they send a patch for that. And they're just fixing the problem. And so, you know, if, if they're fixing check patch rather than, you know, rather than fixing the driver. And so when they've done, the driver's a little bit better. I don't object to those patches, but it's not really that much closer to being a finished job. Other developers come in with the idea of wanting to fix the driver. They, find, they look around, they, they, maybe they fix the check pack things, they, they find problems themselves, they stick at it, persist. 
And that's the sort of person we really want. Um, and it requires, all this you know, does still require engagement from me. As I said, one of the requirements is there's got to be somebody who cares. And while I don't necessarily need to review every single patch, Greg does review all the patches. He, I don't know where he finds the time. He does a fantastic job. He doesn't find all the bugs, though, um, to be honest, and I wouldn't expect him to. He, he knows what he wants to look for, and he finds those things. So review is important still, you know, even though I'm not, I don't have the time to go through and fix all this code, um, I need to put in at least a little bit of time to review that, which isn't that hard. When you've had a bit of experience with kernel code, um, doing some of this review is not really that hard. Testing is really important, particularly for things like the newbie, because maybe a couple of thousand of them were made, and the person, the developer who's finding these patches in driver staging does not have one. Um, if, if we're lucky, I can convince them to actually do a compile test with the, for the MIPS architecture to actually see if it builds, but I definitely can't get them to test it. So uh, for some of the patches, particularly, I was testing it and saying, sorry, this doesn't work, I don't know why, but you know, this, this is the D message output and this is how far it got, or things like that. Uh, sometimes I do a bit more debugging, I'd sort of, well, it hung and I found out that it hung somewhere between this call and that call. And, and the guy in question, this is actually Sergio, he did a lot of fantastic stuff. Um, so this, is, this Sergio is an example of someone in the, in the second balloon there, fixing the driver, this is what he wanted to do. Uh, he'd made a, a bunch of fixes of all sorts, and what's missing, he says, what's missing to make this driver out of staging after these changes? And that required me to do a bit more than just view, reviewing a view patch, I had to actually look at the code and think about it. And I found a few things, there's still more, but I found a few things. So that was quite, that was a really, that was a wonderful thing to read, I must admit. And I got that email for him, I thought, yes, this is actually, this is a process that's actually working, tick, you know. Um, so it, he fixed the things that I found and got it to the stage where it was ready to submit it for inclusion to, to the GPO. This is, this, is, this is all working on the GPIO um, driver for the MT7621. And Dan, Dan Carpenter, who, you know, he has that um, smatch static analysis. He, he keeps, watches the whole um, driver staging process and gives a lot of useful advice. And he said, Look, looks like a nice driver to me now, thanks. And when he posted it, Linus Waleji, Wale, Linus, <laughs> sorry, Thanks for your patch was where he started, which is, again, a really positive thing. He then had a whole pile of helpful review comments, many more than I had found, um, which is to be expected, I guess. And Sergio went through the process of, of a few more rounds of getting those things fixed. And um, when he finally got accepted by Linus and he could then send a patch to Greg to remove it from driver staging, we got from Greg, yay, Sergio, nice job. Which say a lot of positive feedback. You do hear sometimes that the kernel's a bit of a toxic place, but I want to say driver staging is not that toxic place. Um, it's meant to be a place that welcomes new developers. In my experience, it certainly is a place that welcomes new developers. I mean, if your patch is no good, you'll be told as much, but there's no, there's a lot of positiveness as well. Um, it's really, I think, quite healthy. So where did we get to with, where are we up to with the, the newbie, the MT2671? Well, only the, GPI, G, the GPIO driver is the only one that's been merged so far. Um, so it's no longer driver staging. PCIe driver has come a long way. It was pretty ordinary. It's been cleaned up. It, it was using legacy, so the MIPS at least, the, there are legacy PCI drivers and generic PCI drivers and it, it's been transitioned from legacy generic, and I assume that's a good thing. Um, when, I, when I first got it, I had to have these really awful hacks to get it to choose the right interrupt number, because there's some weird interrupt routing rules for PCIe that I kind of almost understood before I got them working and forgot about it. But yeah, so that's, I think that's probably getting close to being ready. Um, the MMC drivers had a lot of work, as I said, a lot of it to get it similar to what we already have, so we can find the differences. There's still lots of other stuff to do. Um, there aren't very many Sergios, apparently. But I can be patient. Progress is what we want. So on the whole, I think this seemed like a promising venture. We aren't there yet. Hopefully, in a, another few months, I might have a bit more time, pers my personal time, to plough back into it and maybe get some of these drivers moving along myself. 
uh, but it's been it's been good to watch other people and to help and encourage other developers. So it's a good thing to do. So that was one of my one of my two projects. The other one was Lustre, the cluster file system. This was developed oh, early 2000s, I think, it first appeared. Um, it's just been out of tree. It's pretty much always been out of tree. Uh, um, in May 2013, uh, part of Lustre was landed, landed in driver staging. It was only, only the client, and maybe not all of the clients, I'm not sure. There's, there's certainly various bits that aren't there. The, the Kerberos security models aren't there. I think they might have been removed. I'm not sure. Anyway, so 2013, it arrived. 2017 is when I, I started working on it. Jeff said to me, I'd been saying to Jeff, oh, I'm bored of NFS, I'm bored of RAID. What, what else can I do? Give me a toy to play with. He said, how about Lustre? So I said, Lustre? Start having a look, and this is a big job. But that's all right, I started. I started contributing. At first, it was very slow. Maybe the community didn't know me very well. I didn't, you know, what do we do with this? This new guy's sending patches. I don't understand them. What do we do? But I persisted, and I sent a few patches, and eventually, I think, actually, part of my theory is Greg was... This was probably when I started. was about the time when the people in the know started hearing about these um, Spectre bugs and stuff like that. And my guess is that Greg was totally caught up with, with um, worrying about Spectre and, and the other one and didn't have so much time for driver staging because he didn't seem to be responding then nearly as much as he has been doing in maybe the last six to eight months. But then, for whatever the reason was, it was a slow start, but about six months after that, things picked up. But then, 1st of June 2018, Greg deletes the driver from driver staging. Kylie was just saying to me, I can't find the luster in driver staging, and he was exactly right because it's not there anymore. So it's been removed. Why has it been removed? Well, it's not really moving forward. That was just one small line out of the mail Greg, Greg sent when he deleted the whole thing. What does he mean? And I think the best way to talk about that is to go back to the picture of fixing a problem and fixing a driver, which is the two different approaches to things in driver staging. And, and note that there is another one, adding features to driver. This is not what driver staging is for, primarily. But over the, the years that Lustre was in driver staging, this happened quite a bit. A lot of drive-by patches, a lot of people running check patch and removing spaces and, and removing parentheses and, and fixing it in various ways, also breaking it in various ways. You know, oh, look, these, these, there's a bunch of patches which the code was originally, while not list empty, get the first thing off the list and, do, and delete it and do something with it, maybe. And somebody said, oh, no, no, don't do it like that. Use a list for each safe. They changed them all to use lift risk for each safe, which sometimes works, but if you do anything at all clever, like delete something, then reinsert it, which at least two places did, it doesn't work. So those looked like nice clean-up sort of patches. They weren't. They broke things. And there were some other, other drive-by patches that broke things that I found, I found. I was doing testing, and gee, look, half the tests fail. This can't be right. Um, well, no, not half. And I looked into some of them, and I found out why, and it was a patch that some contributor, some helpful contributor had provided. So this is, as I said before, testing is really important when you're accepting patches from, from the community. It, it really is. I mean, review is important, testing is important too. I don't think the testing had really been happening in Lustre. But anyway, there have been quite a few of these. There hadn't really been much of this. No one had been really taking the attitude of let's go through and fix things. I mean, even Al, Al Vera had been doing some fixing, but again, it was, it was a particular problem, a particular thing that he cared about, and he went through and tried to deal with it. So some, some pretty big fixes had happened, but no one was really systematically doing this, at least until I came along. Um, it was kind of what I'd been tasked to do, and so I was going through methodically finding things and fixing things. So I thought we were doing the right thing. When, when Greg came along and deleted it, I thought, I've been doing it. But this, this is a real problem, I think, because when Lustre landed in uh, driver staging, development continued outside of driver staging in the, the other tree, wherever it was hosted by Intel for a while, while Intel owned it. Now it's hosted at WAM Cloud that DDN owns it. Um, and development had continued out of tree, 
And some of the developers thought, you know, if we, le if we leave Lustre with that old 2013 version, no one's ever going to use it. It's going to be way behind. It's going to be totally out of date. It's going to be useless. So we're going to keep feeding the updates, the features into it. And Greg didn't like that. Greg thought this is not the point. I mean, if, if lots of this had been happening at the same time, he probably would have coped. I mean, he, it took him, what, five years to really decide it was acceptable. It wasn't a, a quick decision on his part. But he apparently, I'm not witness to all of this, but apparently he'd been saying, you know, I don't want to see these feature improvements. I want to see the code being cleaned up. But the feature improvements kept coming and the code cleanups, not so much. So eventually he said, nah, go away. Um, so were, were the feature additions, were fe feature additions were going into the outside tree? Well, primarily, and then somebody was porting them from the outside tree into staging, and that was the problem. Porting the, the feature enhancements from outside the tree into staging was something that Greg thought, don't do that because that's slowing down the work of cleaning it up. The engineers should be cleaning it up. If, if anyone cares about this, there should be, some, there sh as I said before, there needs to be somebody who cares about it. There needs to be somebody working on it, at least to some extent, and cleaning it up and making it more like Linux. And if you're just adding functionality, that's not making it more like Linux. So Greg eventually said no, which I didn't think was such a good idea. But maybe he did. Maybe he's right. He's Greg. He's pretty clever. And anyway, he's right by definition, right, because he's in control of driver staging. So was this a good idea? Are there benefits from having a tooth pulled? Well, you don't get any more of those drive-by patches that are buggy. That's a good thing. I mean, maybe there weren't hundreds of them, but there were a dozen or two. A, a dozen just of the list entry patches, for example. Um, and it's kind of a good thing. Um, we no longer have to fit in the rules. This is something, this is one of the excuses or reasons, depending on how you perceive it, that Greg gave. He said, uh, now the Lust developers can go off and work in their own out of tree code base and don't have to worry about providing valid change log entries and breaking up their patches into logical pieces. And I think, no, this is, this is not a happy place to be. I mean, breaking up your pat giving proper change log entries and breaking up your patches is a good thing. It's a really good thing whether you're in tree or whether you're out of tree. One of the things I've been doing recently is, is getting a particular bit of functionality. So what I've done is I got a, you know, cloned the, the git tree at that point where Greg um, reverted the patch, removed all of Luster and I re reverted the patch. So I've got Luster back again and I've been continuing to work there and working with the other Luster developers and getting patches from them. So we, we still plan to move Luster into Linux. Just and it's still kind of in driver staging in my tree. It's just not in driver staging in Linux's tree. Um, and one of the things I did recently is uh, a particular bit of functionality called multi-rail, which is kind of multi-pathing over RDMA or something. Um, having multiple interfaces on the one network um, is about forty patches. And the first patch was 44,000 lines, and I looked at it and thought, they were reviewed by tags, but there's no way you can review a patch like that. And so I spent the better part of a week dividing it up into individual patches that did individual things. And I found a bug. I found some code that was then never used. Um, I found some code that was at least questionable. And it's like, the only way you can re review stuff is if you provide valid change log entries and break your patches up into logical pieces. It's the only way you can have work reliable codes, the only way you can have trusted codes. So I don't think Greg did us any favours by encouraging us not to work like that. That's fine. I'm going to keep working like that. So the benefits of removal seem pretty thin on the ground. Um, what about the, the costs of removal? Why is it a bad thing to have your tooth pulled? Um, well, it means users can't run Lustre with just a pure upstream kernel. Now, you could, you can't, you could never run on, on a server, but you might have a bunch, whole lot of clusters and fewer servers, a whole lot of clients, sorry, and fewer servers. And there's anecdotal evidence that some people were using Ubuntu to 
just using the Lustre client, driver staging Lustre client in Ubuntu in real clusters. I don't know how true that is. Given the number of bugs I found while testing, mind you, the bugs might have only been hit by the particular test cases. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's true. Um, but if you're going to have Lustre, you've got to have a non-upstream kernel, at least on the servers, having it on the cl clients as well is probably not too big a deal. So I don't know, maybe that's not a really big cost. So that's the first cost. Second cost, no more non-buggy drive-by patches. We no longer have a horde of people running check patch for us and, and sending fixes. Is that a loss? I'm not sure. I mean, there is still a lot of work to do. There's a lot of white space cleanup that is still needed, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of use of hash defines and stuff that really could be improved. I, there's a lot of fairly mechanical stuff that could be done by somebody other than me, but then I'd have to review it. It's a bit of six one, half a dozen of the other. I'm not really sure if that's a big cost or not, but I've lost it and probably I'll be going through and fixing some more of this stuff. I've already been doing some. No community testing. I think that's kind of probably the, one of the bigger, bigger ones. Zero day, no longer tests every commit. And um, one, th I mean, I can compile Lustre on x86-64. Um, they compile it on several other architectures as well and, and report problems that happens with that. And they do various static analysis passes that I don't do. So there's been talk about trying to ask zero day to work with our outer tree Lustre. After all, I mean, when Lustre was still owned by Intel and Zero Day is run by Intel, you know, I'm sure we could have worked out a synergy there. Um, they may still, they may be willing to do it. I, I haven't asked. Somebody else said he probably would, but I don't know if that's happened. So that is a loss, I think, but maybe not an insurmountable one. My fourth one I've listed there is become susceptible to the platform problem. And this is probably, I think, the biggest one. Who's heard of the platform problem? Nobody's heard of the platform problem. We really need to advertise this more because it's a really important concept and you need to be aware of it. Um, it was first mentioned in a Linux Weekly News article, I don't know, 10-ish years ago, um, attributed to Thomas Gleitzner, I think. So the idea of the platform problem is you're writing a driver and your driver works on a platform, which is Linux. And when you're focused on writing your driver or your file system or your whatever, Everything else is kind of immutable. You've got to make your driver work with Linux. And if there's some kind of an impedance mismatch, the temptation is to hack your driver rather than fix Linux. And there are reasons for that, because I'm totally in control of my driver and, and I can hack it the way I want. But trying to fix Linux, trying to talk to upstream people, some of them are really nice and friendly. Some of them are so busy they never reply to you. Some of them just don't understand your need the way that you understand your need. It's hard work to, it can be hard work to get things, to make changes to the platform. The problem is that people just don't bother. Um, this, uh, a really classic example of this, was some, some years ago, um, the, ran, the, the hash, hash 64, hash long function, there's a standard hash 64 function in uh, include Linux hash.h, which didn't work on 64-bit numbers. It, 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 the way it was generalized from 32-bit where it did work to 64-bit where it didn't work was, was just wrong and produced really bad numbers, 64-bit. And I was aware of at least two or maybe three different people who had been aware that it didn't work but hadn't tried to fix it. They'd worked around it. They'd used hash32 twice or they'd done something like that. And eventually when Linus found out about it, he said, this is dumb, and he fixed it, right? Because to Linus, Linux isn't the... This is Linus Torvalds now. Linux isn't the platform, Linux is his driver, right? It's, it's all his, so he can fix it, but nobody else seemed to be quite motivated to. Um, so when you're out of tree, so even when you're in tree, it's, it's hard to, it can be hard to motivate yourself to fix code that's not yours. When you're out of tree, it's even harder. There's some things I want to change in ha our hash tables, because Lustre had its own, has its own resizable hash table implementation. And our hash tables is just so much better in so many ways, but not in all ways, right? And so I went to make some improvements to it. And I sort of was send, been sending patches and one of them was maybe a little bit obscure, a little bit weird. And Dave Miller writes, during this whole ordeal, and 
probably was a bit of an ordeal. I, I messed up a few times. This is, to some extent, it's on me. I was under the impression that this was all going to be used for something in tree. But now, and this was probably mid to late June, so now was true. A little bit earlier, it wouldn't have been true. Now I see that you want to use it all this stuff for luster, which is now out of tree. It would be extremely hard for me to accept adding this kind of complexity in weird semantics. Well, it's not really that weird, I don't think. But there you are. Maybe I just have to sell it better. Weird semantics to an already extremely complicated and delicate piece of infrastructure is something in tree would use it. Think. Anyway, the, the point was, if I, I, there's no way I could sell it to him unless it was actually going to be used in tree, of value to an in tree file system, um, something, driver. So that's going to be difficult to resolve. I'll have to maybe see if I can find some in tree file systems to use it. Maybe, maybe only, only submit the bits that I really absolutely need. I don't know. I've... I sort of stepped away from it for a couple of months, and I'll, I'll get back to it. But it's, it's a real problem. When you're out of tree, people don't take you quite as seriously. I would much rather Luster still be in driver staging on the whole. On balance, there are, there are swings and roundabouts I would rather be were, but we're not. And I'm going to have to live with that. For a while, at least. So... Two projects, two totally different experiences in driver staging, and yet there was, was a bit of a similarity. You saw the, the, the balance between the, the different, different sorts of approaches that people have. You know, I'm just fixing bugs, or I'm, I'm actually, am I fixing the driver? And just fixing bugs is useful for the developers. You know, we're, we're here to encourage developers, and if we just let them fix bugs, then that builds their confidence and builds their... Um, visibility and stuff, so it's a good thing. I'm not against that at all. It's just, it's not sufficient, I guess. It's good, it's necessary, it's not sufficient. We need people to fix the whole driver as well. Anyway, a little bit of a summary to, to wrap up. Poor quality code is welcome, but lack of clear, clear progress is not welcome. We need to be moving forward. Um, maybe not every week or every month, but we need to be moving forward. And it can be crap to start with, but hopefully it won't. It'll be less and less crap as time goes by. Drive-by patches should be expected, but carefully reviewed and carefully tested. Most are good, yeah. I mean, I've said some bad things about some, but most of them are good. Most of them are, a lot of them are really simple, and you look at them and think, yes, that's fine. Hardly even worth saying reviewed by, but you do, because you need to encourage people. A few are terrible, and when they're terrible, you just point it out clearly. Occasionally someone who turns up who will contribute a lot and such people are worth their weight in gold. Uh, maybe silver. Anyway, they're worth, they're worth putting extra time into. They're worth motivating. They're saving. I mean, it's, you, you're investing in them and the return you get, I think, is more, definitely more than the time you put in. Um, it's not free, but it's, it's cheap labour, I guess. Be prepared to review. Be prepared to test. I mean, this should be obvious, right? We review code, we review test code. Um, because of the particular dynamics of the driver staging, you can't expect, and this is more of the, the last point, you can't expect the people you're working with to be particularly expert, even though they're quite they may be quite competent, um, very clever even, they're not necessarily an expert, they don't have the same wealth of experience because they're here to try and get experience, right? And so you need to, to be mindful of that. You know, they might be clever, but they don't know everything that you do, and... Um, they're unlikely to be experts and they need support. And one last little lesson learned. It's even, you can even get noticed in the Linux Weekly News kernel statistics. All my reviewed buys for most of the GPIO stuff, I got number eight. Eighth place in the reviewed by rankings. Actually, it's really easy to get reviewed by. No, there aren't nearly as many reviewed buys as there are, for instance, signed off buys or from. So if you want to get in the rankings, review patches. So, there's my uh, experiences, my adventure, ongoing adventure to some extent. Um, any questions? Yes, John? In regards to Luster, it's been rejected obviously for now. Is there a plan for getting it put back either into staging or otherwise? Yes. Uh, now, how concrete did you want that plan to be? I, I, I'm not wanting details on it, obviously. I'm just wanting... It's, the way you put it, it sounded like it was hopeless. Oh, well, no more luster in the kernel. No. Goodbye, never see you again. The, the intention 
um, is to get all the... So as I said, I've got a, a tree. It's on GitHub, as, at least. A Git tree, which is updated every RC I, I merge the layers from Linux. It contains driver staging luster. And with, lot, with more cleanups from me, with a bunch of stuff from the upstream luster merged in, more stuff being merged in next week. I've got a bunch of patches to review. Um, the intention is to get all of the functionality in upstream luster that's relevant, all of the client-side functionality, into that tree, then finish the cleanup uh, and continue bringing stuff in as it's developed, finish the cleanup, move it from driver staging to FS luster and net LNet and include and just get it into some sort of format. And then when, I'm, when it's got to the stage where I think this is actually reasonably good code, try and figure out how to submit it to Linus, to whoever, try and get people like Christoph and Vero and Dave Miller and whatever to review it and accept it into the various places. So, so I guess my question really is, it wasn't just a cut off, don't come back no more kind of thing. No, no, Greg, Greg quite explicitly said, go away, clean it up yourself, and then come back when it's ready. Um, not exactly those words, but certainly that intent. Yep, so... I'm still working on it. Do we mic down the front? No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Maybe a quick question. So wouldn't this require actual change of mind state in the Luster community itself? Because it seems to me that they are just developed in their own playing ground and they just dump it to the staging because, okay, dumping stuff is easy, but then, like, obviously, if it should be long-term sustainable, it requires change of attitude in them to be at least the new code they are producing should be capable of being merged, like being of the upstream quality, let's say, because otherwise you would always have someone to be continuously cleaning up the, their mess which they made with the new development. Absolutely. Um, I think they are aware of that, uh, different people to different extents. Oh, I see a big part of my role is, is not just with the code, but it's the people um, to help them see by demonstration what it's like working in the kernel community. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm the kernel community to them, um, as accepting as I can be, and in sort of insisting on the good change logs and on the splitting things up and, and that sort of stuff. And I think on the whole, they're improving. Um, so, I mean, one, one thing I, I noticed earlier, and I think it's still there a bit, is I saw a really strong us and them attitude in the Lustre development community. It was like, um, we have to convince upstream of them. It's like, we are luster, they are upstream. It was kind of an ad adverse adversarial situation. We have to convince them to accept this thing. They're always attacking us. Um, I think they've had some bad experiences of particular developers being very blunt about not liking things, maybe not entirely understanding. Um, there, there's some is been issues about RDMA, which I don't understand because I've barely know what RDMA is and certainly don't know the insides of the code. But you know, I'm, I'm, it's on my timeline. I'm going to get there and help them all work together, hopefully. So yes, and at, at some stage, we'll want to get to the point where the development happens basically in upstream kernel first and is backported. Uh, I think that's a long way off. I don't think we can really do that until we get server-side code into Linux kernel. Uh, and that's, that is quite a way off. But I, I, I think that is a, a goal that at least the, the key Luster developers do share, um, though maybe they don't quite see how it'll work yet. But I think to, as I push, they will come along. Thanks. Good. Excellent question. Same question, right. Um, any other questions? If not... Bang on time, four o'clock. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>